Rukia. Oh, I'm sorry, was I interrupting something? Oh, no, oh, no. I just talked to Rukia. She is on her way. She was in a car accident about two weeks ago. Okay. Was it two, already two weeks? No, a week ago. Um, she was in this car accident about a week ago, and she was rear-ended, and oh. she's um, moving kind of slow. She has some back problems, and then she said she fell this morning. So, oh, okay. so she's she's on her way, but um, right. <laughs> taking it easy. So. Oh, all right, that's yeah. not a problem. Okay. I was just, um, if you don't mind, if I walk around, just no, get no, ambient noise. Right and and go right ahead. Thank you. Make yourself comfortable. So I can't have orientation in here this morning. Um, no, they're doing this interview thing. You know, I'm not sure. Most people have been paying at the time they do their orientation, uh, but obviously your the circumstance is just a little bit different. So um, I don't know if you're thinking of delivering it, uh, giving it to the mom, mailing it. Tell me what you were planning to do. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's all right. That's all right. We have a big, huge playground building.
the sounds. Oh, okay. Yeah. just in a mood where I'm just like empowering people so we just not, it's a poem actually so yeah it's kind of I don't know let's see where it goes yeah that's what I'm doing all right yeah because I love to um well poems would be a lot it's, it like move me and I'm just like I'm part of empower like I'm kind of empowered by poems and quotes and I'm just like they wake me up when I'm like sleep, so you know, I'm feeling down, I look up quotes and they empower me, so I'm always like writing too. So I'm just like, you know what, this this so I can knock that down, you know. So yes, that's what I'm doing. Writing up. If you wanted to just, just read for the Oh, okay. What you got so far. So I have, so far I have, um, maybe this is where we all start on the ground. From there we stand up and tell each other we can make it all happen. We can change people's lives, dream big, laugh, love, sing, create, live, establish, and then I'll finish up from there. Yes. And what's your first name? Sahara. Sahara. Yes. Oh, okay. So did she tell you about uh Yes. Oh, yeah. And uh, uh, yeah, we're gonna um, I know another like group of students will okay. be interviewing you and then we're gonna do Rukia. Okay. So yeah, okay. yeah. So yeah. well it's nice to meet you and thank, thank you for you. sharing us. Thank really you. appreciate it. Thank you. 
one more. I almost forgot. What? There's one question we're asking everybody in the neighborhood. What mm -hmm. is home to you? What does that mean to you? Well, home means safety to me. Home means a place where I can be and just, you know, not worry about anything mm -hmm. and just be ready to do things that I want to kind of do and just spread my legs out and just be safe. You know, that's what home means to me. Welcome, Ricky, to the BLC Field School participating in its um, in this interview. And if you just let's start off with just um, your full name and what you do, or just a little bit about yourself. Well, thank you um, for having me. My name is Rukia Alexander, and I'm the associate director of programs here at our Next Generation. Our Next Generation, we're an after-school program, and we serve students from first through. Um, the completion of 12th grade and then either even after that step of completing high school we have a connection with the students through our grad club to where we're monitoring their um, academic progress or maybe offering a small scholarship but just another way to keep in touch with them to give them that support piece after high school. And, and how long have you been here? I have been in our next generation for six years. I started as the educational coordinator and then recently, as of March, I became the Associate Director of Programs. And um, what kind of programs do you have here, more specifically? We, we have a variety of programs. Our first through eighth grade, we have a program called Homework Club. And it, it was initially created Homework Club 20 years ago, and we stuck with that name. But we do focus on academic enrichment, but our bigger um, goal is reaching that relationship and personal development with our youth. We have an emphasis on literacy. So all the activities that we do surrounding the youth, are, it revolves around literacy, getting them interested in reading. We hope to increase reading levels and reading abilities, but our main goal is to get the kids interested in wanting to read on their own and not feel as if it's a task. We partner up with numerous companies and other agencies around Milwaukee to give the students that exposure and experience outside of the community so they can begin to see different career options or different parts of Milwaukee. We partner with St. John's on the Lake, Manpower Group Headquarters, University School of Milwaukee, UWM, MSOE, and freighted. So each day of the week, we have a group of students, what we call outbound learning, going off-site to receive their literacy or academic support there. We also have a program called Leadership Club to where we focus on seventh and eighth graders, getting them prepared for high school and getting them prepared to realize the person that they want to become. So we hope to give them a little bit of that personal development piece and that leads into our high school connection program. And that's where we focus on career exploration, college exploration, and really give them that uh, personal development and job training skills to prepare them for that next step. What do you see as, um, when you have these programs, what are, uh, I mean, a couple of the barriers with Washington Park neighborhood and the kids here and coming in and what's... I think some of the barriers may be um, who, we're, <laughs> who we are and what we really offer the community. We're much bigger than what I think people expect or imagine. Some people still view us as, oh, that's St. Andrew's Church which we were, and that's how Homework Club started. But we've expanded, and we um, are much greater than, we have more services than what people realize. I think also some of the safety issues that are in this community, um, that creates barriers. 
We have our high school connection program that maybe runs until eight o'clock. However, some of the students or the families may not feel um, safe within the area of having their students out that late on public transportation. So I think there's, when people find out about, about us, then word of mouth spreads, and that's our best piece of outreach, and it's a huge resource for us because they see, oh wow, they expose the kids to so much, they have a lot of opportunities, but I think maybe the knowledge of who we are and what we actually do, and then the neighborhood safety may become a barrier. Oh, what do you see as um, an improvement, you know, to, to break down that barrier? What do you think it's just more communication and networking within mm -hmm. the community? I think you hit it right on the key. We are in the middle, I would say, a little heart <laughs> to where a lot of the small nonprofits in this immediate area are um, beginning for the past few years, fusing together and using each other's resources. So we have Munir's Art Studio. We have Washington Park Partners, who's a huge resource for us. We have the Urban Ecology Center. We have Express Yourself Milwaukee. So I think we all face the same type of barriers to some capacity. So we're working together to make this area a little bit more attractive and welcoming and offering resources that students may not have or will have to go way out of the immediate area to obtain. And a lot of the programs that all of the agencies here offer, including our next generation, are minimal cost to free. So that's a bonus as well for the people in the area who possibly can't afford to send their students to a literacy program or an art program. They can walk a few blocks and receive free service that's um, good quality as well. And uh, could you tell me some of uh, a couple of success stories with students coming through the program? There's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's in a lot of our students. They may start with us in second grade or third grade, and they continue on through leadership and then through high school, and then that's when we see the beauty of them. We have a few um, students that, in particular. One you'll be interviewing next, but one of our students who graduated in graduated from high school 2012, yeah, 2012, uh, from our senior group that graduated then, they all come back. And before, they all come back to some capacity. Maybe it's during homework club where the students are doing homework and they need that one-on-one -on -one academic support. They come back and volunteer their time. One student that we do have, Julian Miller, graduated, and um, a lot of our high school students may not have that support. Even if they have two parents in the household, some of our high school students may not live with a family member. They may live with a friend or live in a shelter or they don't know where they'll be sleeping that night. But they still pull through through our program and they still become successful. One of our students, Julian Miller, graduated from high school and I attended their graduation ceremony and I was sitting next to his mother and father. They have um, a special ceremony called the Kente Ceremony to where they pass on the Kente cloth. So I'm sitting there and the next thing I know, I hear my name. So I'm, I know it's like a mistake because here's mom and dad, but he called me up to present to me and give me the speech of why he completed high school, why he received the help with financial aid and X, X, Y, Z. And that meant a lot to me because for me, it felt through the agency, I was able to help and support this student that wasn't getting that support that he needed, sitting next to a drunk father and a mother who could care less. Um, after the graduation ceremony, the mother came up to me and said, um, I'm a little hurt but I have to give credit where credit is due. Thank you for helping my son. So we have a lot of, that may seem small, you know, to other people, but for our students in this area to where the graduation rate is 32%, 97% of our students complete high school and go beyond. So that's a huge success for us. Another student, Sahara Aiden, she's a student at um, St. Joan Antita, very successful in our mind. Um, 
and there may be some culture barriers. We have a maybe 40% of Somali Bantu students enrolled in our program. So there's a huge cultural difference within our agency that we were able to fuse and sort of still keep that family feel. However, our values may not be the values, and no disrespect, our values may not be the values of her culture. And now that she's here, she's learned to speak English, perfect, perfect good student, she's been accepted to MSOE, we celebrate that, however, her family does not. By this time, they feel that she should be married or, you know, have starting a family. So that's some of the struggles that some of our students will deal with and are dealing with, but with the support, they're still pulling through. So there's different capacities of barriers and, and success stories in our, in our eyes that our students are overcoming a lot um, to achieve what they view as success. How do you, it, it seems like in, in like ne negotiating, for lack of a better term, with like Sahara's parents mm -hmm. or whoever, who's, um, or guardian, whoever's involved mm -hmm. with a student with, from a different culture that says, no, you should be doing this, Whereas it, more in our culture, it's like, no, you can get an education, mm -hmm. you know, and um, you can do what you want, mm -hmm. you know. Um, uh, if you can tell me more about, like, how do you, like, when you talk to the parents, what, what is that discussion like? I think, well, for the most part, there is a language barrier because her mother doesn't particularly speak English well or understand English well. So a lot of the time there needs to be a translator. So then that's one barrier because we're not fully getting the gist of what each other is saying. Um, what I try to do is we actually employed Sahari here to work maybe two hours a night, three hours a night. She's also involved in our high school connection program. So it's not sneakingly going behind her mother's back. She is working here. However, she is allowed to study here. Um, if she's at home and she's studying, then she has to stop and do something around the house. Here, she's allowed to study, receive help if needed, academically, whatever it may be. Um, so I think once college begins, there may be another sort of disconnect between her and the family. And I know her mother truly wants the best for her, and she's keeping true to her traditions, but now that Sahara is here, she sees another way out for herself. And this doesn't mean um, that is a, a, a aspect for the Somali Bantu students here. However, we do have a large percentage that do want their students to achieve because they see that's the way out. That's the way out of poverty. That will help you become successful here in America and still keeping your, your culture and your roots. So there's a difference. Um, the first family that we begin to work with, um, he has a, a family of, of daughters, and I believe it's it's quite a few of them. I think it's six or seven, and his focus for them is academics. So he doesn't care too much about the recreation. He wants academics. So he has a daughter who recently graduated from our program, and now she's enrolled in UWM. He's pushing all of them to do that. But so it's a, a difference in their community as well. It's some view them as becoming Americanized and then some, you know, are holding true to their traditional values and no type of accommodation at all. So someone like Sahara is caught in the middle to where she may have a cousin. She actually does have a cousin, the one that I mentioned in high school now, I mean in college now, UWM, but yet her mother is still creating that block for her. So it's sort of hard for her and it may take for her to completely separate and achieve on her own, so. And um, when did you start getting um, uh, like Somali Bantu? Mm -hmm. And um, are there other um, people that you got from, or God, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah it's we. Um, I came before I came here. I was a teacher at Claire Muhammad School, and that's a Muslim school. And a lot of the Somali, well, all the Somali Bantu students are Muslim. So when they're brought here, 
they seek out schools or programs that cater to Muslim learning. So that's how I became in contact with that group Mm -hmm. that's here and that father. So when I came here, he still wanted his, his daughters to be involved with me at some capacity. So they started maybe 2011, 2010, 2011 in the summertime in our summer camp program. And he was impressed. And then that's when he began to enroll his children for the fall. And then the numbers grew. We have a process to where each parent has to come in and do an intake with me. And it's a small interview process. We learn a little bit about the family, the children, their academics. So it's one-on-one. And (laughs) he began to call his sister. Then he called um, a cousin. And then next thing I know, it's 20 people in the room all wanted to sign their families up. And, And that's what I mean about the word of mouth. And they live within walking distance. We have a family that stays right next door. But for years, they thought this was a church. And in the beginning, he had a little pushback because they thought this was a Christian church and they didn't want their students, their children involved and be converted to another uh, religion or adapt another culture. And so that goes full circle about who we are and what we really offer, what type of program we are. People still view us as a church. Mm. So that may limit who comes here. So, but yeah, 2011, 2012, that's when we start to begin the Somali Bantu uh, influx of students. And in the beginning, it was a challenge. I think we started with five and there was a challenge because now we have these girls here who look different, who can speak a different language, talk with a deep accent. They're different, you know, and it wasn't, you know, quote unquote, the ONG way. So we had a huge <laughs> gap with our ONG students and the new Somali, Somali Bantu students. And it was pretty rough in the beginning. Um, it was pretty rough in the beginning. But what I do here is I enforce a family type atmosphere. And they all know that. <laughs> and I all make them look at each other as if they're brother and sister. And that creates a huge difference. So we got over the hump of your different I'm different, so we don't like each other. <laughs> um, so we, we, we re- reached a, a new level of that. So I am proud of that because it was really bad to where families were getting involved and maybe possibly when I don't want my children involved in the program. Mm-hmm. So um, and you would think that's weird um, with African Americans and then Africans with that type of disconnect. But it's all because... I don't know, so I'm uncomfortable. And that's the same thing with any other. I don't know, so I'm uncomfortable, so I'll judge you. So, but that that was a huge success for us, you know, Mm -hmm. in welcoming different uh, nationalities, welcoming different cultures and celebrating that. We recently, with Washington Park Partners and Expression South Milwaukee, um, we had a, this was, this was in March, yeah, I believe it was in March. We had a, a cultural celebration event here to where, and the Monk Association came out to where we wanted to highlight all of the cultures that we represent in this community. And we had a few performances and we had dishes from all over and just just to celebrate those differences because we all are unique and those should be celebrated. So we try to do things on that capacity to where we want to expose everyone from all types of nation- nationalities here in our program. And uh, about like the community involvement mm-hmm. and, and you know getting um, getting them talking to each other pretty much. Mm-hmm. Um, that do you also uh, partner with uh, churches in the community, the church leaders? We try. Um, we try. And I think for our next generation, we our whole thing is we are we're we want partners. We know you can offer a service that we can. We can help you with a service that you can. So we try to partner with different churches in the area, but the only thing that we may come across is the main focus. We have to be sensitive of what type of religious group we partner up with because we're not a Christian-based organization. 
So partnering up with a Christian-based organization may cause a little bit of tension in our message and what we're trying to do with our youth, given that everyone here is completely different. So that's the only small barrier, but we've worked with a true, I mean, a few uh, church members um, as far as when we do like the community cleanups, when it's huge events, they'll come out, but that consistent one-on-one, I know I can go to pastor, whoever, and, you know, offer this program, or the youth will come here. We haven't been able to achieve that yet, but we're still hopeful that we can. Yeah, and, and it seems like you partnered up with different denominations, different religions, mm-hmm. and it's um, to, to serve the people who come here the most, right? You know, to, to mm-hmm. be more um, uh, inclusive. And um, um, do you have any questions? Yeah, what do you, uh, what's the um, vision for the future for our next generation? Offering that academic support Mm -hmm. to help them see their possibilities. One thing that we do push, especially with our older students, is if you want to achieve and you want to be successful, then you alone are 100% responsible for that. We're here to support you and we'll give you all the resources that, that you need but if you want that success that you dream of, you have to obtain that, and we support you along the way. But I think offering those positive relationships and that academic support, that's a huge full circle. You know, we are here to support you in, in either way. We've gotten phone calls, three o'clock in the morning, two o'clock in the morning, you know, with serious crisis, and I was able to jump up and help, or, I'm confused, I don't know what was going on, I'm having a breakdown. We're there to support them, parent-teacher conference, maybe mediating with a parent and child. (laughs) There's a lot of support that we offer for the students and especially those older students because we find they need it the most. They may not, and as I mentioned before, some of them, they don't live with a family member or they may live with a cousin or a big brother you know, so but they don't have that true guidance to where this is what you do. This is how you dress. This is how you speak. They don't have that. Mm-hmm. So, but then there's a mixture. We have some that do. So, so we try to help the students as, as much as we can and give them that support that they may lack at home. And that academic support, is it with, um, uh, like what, English, math, you know, yep. uh, and uh, what about uh, any other type of classes? We, um, what we do for the homework club, we match them one-on-one with their academic tutor. So at the beginning of the year, we may match Katie and John together, and they're a match. They blend. They build relationships. They become friends. The tutor, they're invited to go to parent-teacher conferences. And every day they're working with them on their homework. So that's the academic support they're getting with their completing of the homework assignments. However, through our literacy, we offer um, math, we offer uh, science along with literacy. So it's a huge clump. And I tell people, when you come in, it may it doesn't look like a literacy program. And I'm happy that it doesn't. <laughs> It may be um, we're reading a story on, what was it, uh, Beatrice and her goat. She was a goat farmer. Um, and so we brought in all types of goat cheese, goat milk, things that deal with that and have the students do a tasting and talk about what does it mean to be a farmer, what does it mean to work with animals, getting them a little bit prepared for that story, pulling out those difficult words from the story so then when we begin to read, they're comfortable. So all this is done to pique their interest in what's going to happen. I remember when I first started, what I would do with the youth is just show them the cover of the book. And then we would have a whole guess game about what the story is about and what the pictures really mean, and especially with Dr. Seuss books. <laughs> but in that, they begin to... Now, I want to know what the story is about. Let's read it. Let's read it. You know, we'll do activities. Let's read it. You know, to hear kids say, let's read it. (laughs) That's huge. So we've seen a lot of progress with literacy levels. We do um, a small assessment in the beginning of each school year and at the end of each school year to see if their levels have increased. And I, we, for the most part, we do see those levels 
raised. I've seen students who would run from a book now maybe pick up a book, maybe sit with a tutor and look at it before it would have been a problem, you know? So we see the small, like, tangible um, interest levels rising in our students here as far as literacy. We have uh, two lending libraries, one out front and one in the back, to where we encourage the community students, whoever, to take books from there, share them, bring them back. Also, all of our bookshelves, the students know if they see a book that they want to take, take it, grab it. <laughs> Just say, <laughs> hey, Miss Rakia, I have this book. You know, share it with a friend, keep it, bring it back. Whatever you want to do, they know if they ever want a book from our shelves, they can, they're welcome to take one. So. And um, the multimedia, the um, you know, do you offer like computer help or? Um... We have um, our tech lab was sort of redesigned for um, our teen center. However, we still use the computers in there. We have computer stations in um, the study center where the students go one on one with their academic um, tutor. We have computer stations around because some of our 8th grade, 7th grade, 5th grade students, they need a computer to do homework, mm -hmm. and they may not have that access at home, so they're able to do that here. We also have netbooks for them to use, you know, so we do have a lot of uh, media outlets for them to go on the computer, do research, type a paper, print it out, whatever it may be. We do offer that for our students. And uh, do you ever open or offer um, just a... I think you mentioned it like an open house for the community. Right. Okay. Um, the For the computers? Uh, just um, oh. our next generation getting mm -hmm. an open house. We, we, have, um, we have a lot of community events. And with those, we'll always partner with Washington Park Partner for the most part. And we try to get as many community members in here as possible to let them know who we are what we do, what type of services we offer. So we'll have those. We have one for the families. For um, We're going to have a back-to-school one. We're going to have one at the end of the summer. We have one during Thanksgiving. We have one, um, I forgot the name of it. We ha recently had one in last two years ago in December, partnered up with Washington Park Partners. Or they may say, hey, we're having an event. We'll house it here. So we're all, we're, this is an open door. We want, mm -hmm. <laughs> we want that exposure and we want that connection with the community so they can feel as if this is our community center. And I think that's what we're aiming for as well for parents, families. We have a community center right here. So we want people to become more aware of that. And uh, I know you mentioned earlier, um, like taking a group of students and going out mm -hmm. and exploring Milwaukee and it's Washington Park. Um, one of those with the Urban Technology yes. Center. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> We've worked with Washington. Before I came on board, we were already working with uh, the Urban Ecology Center. Mm -hmm. So there's a relationship there. And, um, and I'm grateful of that relationship. And our students, they know. <laughs> we're always walking up and down to Washington Park to maybe it's a program that they're offering or one of our own, the huge soccer field, to do a huge kickball game. I think two summers ago we had um, a staff versus student kickball game and manpower volunteers came down. So it was huge. So we do utilize Washington Park quite a bit. In the summertime through Washington Park, um, we uh, they offer free swimming lessons for our students. So every Wednesday morning, our students are walking down and receiving free swimming lessons there in the pool at Washington Park. So we do utilize that quite a bit. <laughs> well, um, and is there, um, no, do you have any questions? No. no. Okay. And uh, well, about um, also like going out like the art museums and, and I saw uh, Sahara writing. Mm. Um, in the, the other room and okay. you can people uh, or students just come in and, and be creative too mm -hmm. and what do you have there for them? Well, For our students they know that they can always come here mm -hmm. um, now community members 
for the most part, they'll come for specific programming. We have youth here Monday through Friday, so there are certain programs that we have for the youth. But our students, regardless of their ages, they know, hey, I have a break from my class down at MATC or UWM. I'm going to ONG so I can type my paper, or I'm going to ONG just to see what they're doing, just to hang out. They know that they always can do that. We have an open door policy for any of our students at any time, even if there's not their assigned program day. So um, in the fall, especially, you'll see a lot of our college students in that tech lab, whether if it's breaking <laughs> from school or if they're using the computers to do homework, if they're on Facebook, whatever it is, they stay connected here and we encourage that because that's a way that we can monitor and make sure that they still receive that support and they're still on the right path. And um, if there's anything that you could um, have at our next generation, a program, equipment, whatever, that one thing, what would it be? A, a bigger building. <laughs> A bigger building because um, what's happening is our homework club kids, we all, they take over. Mm -hmm. And that's the students first through eighth grade. So they take over completely. So our high school students are used to them, and some of our high school students are academic tutors. Mm -hmm. But now they're craving a space of their own, you know, uh, not just a room, but a space of their own. So, and that is in progress. We are working towards that, and that's something that will potentially happen. Um, but just a bigger building of to add more programs to what we offer. One of the reasons that we do the outbound learning every day of the week is because we have more students than we can house. Mm -hmm. So, not just for the high school, but for all of our students, we need more space. So what you see here, those main two rooms, that's what we use. So if we had more space, the program could definitely grow. I remember polling our high school students maybe three years ago at, the, at this time. And um, just general questions, you know, look at the Boys and Girls Club. You can find one in all types of areas in Milwaukee. And I said, would you want us to expand and have more than one ONG? And they all said, no, 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 this is our family. And I said, well, we'll have more. No, no, we don't want that. We want this close-knit unit. You know, so they're not wanting to become too big for their means. They, we just want more space for our students to have different rooms allocated for different programs and, you know, clearly defined space. Mm -hmm. So that's the only thing. The programs, and this may sound biased from me, but the programs that we offer are good quality programs. I mean, for high school males to come here just because, or college males just to come here just because, that's saying something to us. And we need to grab that and make sure that we keep that, that same communication in that same atmosphere to where they feel comfortable coming here. And how many, on average, how many students uh, do you have and, and how many uh, like uh, graduates um, and adult um, mm -hmm. come in too? How many? Um, I would say on average, on a year, we serve close to 300 students. Mm -hmm. And our alum group, I would say, would be anywhere, oh, goodness, the lums would probably be anywhere 20 to 25. Um, some of them are no longer here in Milwaukee, but they still, for summer, they'll come up. Um, one of our um, alum who's in Merriam College, she will be one of our academic teachers this summer. Um, she's studying early childhood education, and she graduates. So, and she's been working with us um, for the past few years, so they're connected in some capacity. So we, our alum group, they're all over, but they still find the time to come here or, <laughs> um, so they're really connected. And, and that, that arrives uh, to the next question, impact. Mm. Uh, the, the impact that this program has mm -hmm. on people. Uh, describe that and the lasting impact. Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable and until 
And I think we all are so busy with making sure this goes right, this goes right, that we never truly see, we know that we offer, and I'm no means trying to sound cocky, but we know that we offer good quality program for our students, but we never take time to reflect to say, wow, that student really, you know, adores me, or that student adores this program. We offer so much to the students to where they feel as if we're their second home. And that's, <laughs> if I, we can achieve that, then that speaks numbers. We, especially with, we poll our students at the end of the year with the assessments, then there's a couple of open-ended questions that I do with them. Why do you come to High School Connection or why do you come to Homework Club? And they'll say the staff or the activities, but for the most part, there's my second home. And you hear that a lot from that older group. So I think we have an impact on them that I think some of us aren't aware of or you are truly not taking in. Um, so I, I think the parents, we have a huge impact on the parents as well. At the beginning of the school year, we offer, you know, book bags, whatever it may be. But during the middle of the school year, what happens to those students who st in the beginning of the school year when we offer those school supplies, what happens in the middle when those students still run out of school supplies? We're here for them. We have coats, winter coats. We, In my office now, I have a, a bin of hygiene items, toothpaste, toothbrush, deodorant, shampoo, whatever it may be for the ladies, you know, making sure that they have you know, sanitary items, you know, we offer all of that to them without broadcasting it, you know, without saying, hey, who needs a book bag? You know, mm -hmm. we really know the students who may struggle, you know, and we really look out for them. Anyone is welcome to anything that we have here. And those students, you know, it's, it's real when they, they don't come to you and approach you in a manner of, I don't have a coat. You know, I see... I'm just going to use a fake name. I see Johnny with a hoodie, and it's a blizzard. He doesn't have a coat, and he's wearing this hoodie for a month now with no coat. You know, when I ask, where's your coat? Oh, I left it at school. You know, the same thing. He never had a coat. Mm -hmm. So that's when we step up. Oh, see if this fits. Oh, you, you like it? Here, you can take it. You know, so it's, it's, it's done blindly in that manner to where we're not saying, you don't have, you don't have. So... A lot of our students, we know that coming from school, that may be that meal for them. Coming here, we offer a hot meal every day. So they may get baked fish, salad, pasta, spaghetti, whatever it may be. We have a cook and a full service kitchen to where they're getting a full nutritious meal. That may be the last meal for, for some of our students and we recognize that without broadcasting it, but we do recognize that and that's true on a lot of different levels. Do you think that's that's a it's a lot more effective than broadcasting it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I remember um, for our high school students because they have a meal as well. Um, I, I remember it was someone left their plate, and for my high school students, they know I love them with all my heart. But I don't play. If I say do something, that means you know do it. I think a few students left their plate and came in the tech lab and. They just left it. So I said, who left their plate? We don't know. We don't know. We don't know. So I said, if I have to clean it up, and of course I would have never done this. If I have to clean it up, then that means that we're not serving a meal. If I have to, we have to prepare the food and clean up after high school people. And I heard one student say, not to me, well, I'll pick it up because this is the only meal I have. I don't, you know, and it's like, I heard that in the kitchen and he was talking to the other students. So that's what, that was another wow moment for me. Like, wow. Like, they, we have some students, they'll never tell us that. You know, they'll never say, I don't have. But we see that, and we try to support and help them. Okay. So. And uh, about that home mm -hmm. for these students, and um, you know, an alum in some way, mm -hmm. you know, that a home away from home. And what we're asking everyone that we interview mm -hmm. and, and people in the neighborhood, what... What is, what is home to you? What is the meaning of home? Home is love. Home is nurturing. Home is structure. So, um, and that's one thing that I really, if I do nothing, the kids will get love 
and structure from me. They'll get that nurturing, of course. And it's it's funny, I, I remember, I think I was talking to a board member and one of my high school members walked up to me and was like, hey mom, and just hung on me and it's like, I'm kind of an important conversation, but you know, I still embraced her, you know, hey, that's that's what we do here. Um, but they, they, they crave that structure as well. They need structure. And as much as they fight it, you know, prime example, and I hate to keep going on and on, but <laughs> for our high school students, we do that personal development, that career exploration. So we were hitting them with all types of programs week after week after week after week, you know, really getting their minds going. And we said, let's take a break. Let's do uh, like a game day, something fun for them. So we pull out the board games and we have all types of the competitions, you know, the brackets. And they say, Miss Rakia, what are we doing today? We're doing the games. But what are we doing? And I'm like, here we are giving you a break because when we do program, you know, high school students, oh, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. But they crave that. They need that. So <laughs> I'll never forget that. And it's like, but what are we doing today? And I'm like, I thought I was giving you guys a break, but hey, it guess not. <laughs> but as much as they fight it, they want the structure. They want to know, you know, they what they need to do and be guided in that direction. And our expectations for them are high. There's no excuses, you know. We talk to them. This isn't a yelling environment, you know. Sometimes I can just give the students that look, you know, like, really? And it's, sorry, you know. <laughs> so they... To go back to your statement, I'm sorry, but that love, the nurturing, and, and structure, that's home to me. So. Well, thank you very much for participating <laughs> in the interview and in the field school, and, um, you know, and good luck in, with this. And, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks.